with DIY sweets. Today I am going to make some key lime pie. Now when I make the key lime pie, I don't actually use the key limes because they're like about this big and it takes a lot, but I do use fresh limes so that I still get that same really delicious flavor. To start out with, we want to make a graham cracker crust. So the first thing I need to do is I need to get my graham crackers to be um, totally ground up. Usually one crust is about one package of graham crackers. So I'm going to stick two packages because I'm doing two crusts. And if I find if it's not enough, I can throw a few more in after I've measured out. Because to make one crust, I'm going to need one and two thirds cup. So to make two crusts, I'm going to need three and a third cups. And I'm hoping that two packages will be enough because it usually is. And usually you can only get about one package worth in that because you notice that's really full. So now we're just going to close that up and I'm just going to have this As you can see, that really didn't take that long, although I'm looking at it and I can see that I might want to just kind of put some of the bigger crumbs, get them down in there and get some of the light one, and give it just another few seconds. Now, if you don't have a food processor, you can just put it in a bag and use a rolling pin and crush it up. As you can see, this is much quicker, but either way will work. Now that I've got that ground, um, I'm going to start measuring out. Because of this sander part, it's really hard. If I dump it, I usually end up making a mess. So I'm going to use a spoon and spoon it out. So let me get my spoon. Also, I've been melting the butter in the microwave, so I'm going to pull that out so that it's here ready, and I'm going to grab a spoon, and then I'll just come right back and show you how I do this. I just have a spoon. I'm just going to spoon it in here. Remember, I'm trying to get three and one-third cup, because each, rest, each crust takes um, one and two-thirds, so I should be able to get about one and two thirds out of this. And if not, I can easily do a few more. There's my first cup. Now as soon as I get all of the graham crackers measured out and put in here, I will come back and show you what we do next. This is really a really easy recipe. So I'll be back with you as soon as I get uh, the next package ground and all of it measured. I have all of the graham crack crumbs now ground up. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to add the sugar and butter. But before I add the butter, I kind of want to stir to make sure the sugar and the graham crack crumbs are evenly distributed. Once I don't really see any big streaks of white, I will know that they're evenly distributed. Now, as I said, I'm doing two pies worth so that's why I'm mixing in this bowl. If I were just doing one recipe or one pie crumb, I usually actually mix all this in the pie tin. But because I'm doing two, I want to do it in a separate bowl and then um, spread it out equally between the two bowls. Now that I have that, I'm just going to go like this and I want to get all of the crumbs moist. So it just takes a little while of stirring. You're going to have some big chunks where it's really moist, and you just got to mix those into the dry ones because you want to have all of the crumbs moist before you move it to the pie tins. Notice most of it is getting moist.
Now this pie crust does not need to be baked at all. A lot of times when they tell you to um, bake this, what they're trying to do is they're trying to get it so that it hardens up a little bit. Um, you can get it just as firm by maybe sticking it in the fridge for a few minutes so that butter hardens up. But either way, you, you do not need to bake this. So it's easy just not to take that extra step. Okay, so now that butter is really mixed in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my two pie tins here. And I'm just going to put what looks like about half in one and half in the other. And I'm going to kind of lick them at them as I pour it. And if one looks like it has too much, then I can always move it to the other. So now that I have this in, I just want to spread it around. Make sure it's kind of evenly distributed. Oh my, that looks like it may ha I may end up taking some out of that one. And as you're pushing this down and firming it up, if you find there's too much, you can take some out. If you find there's not enough, you might need to add a little bit more. So basically, um, you can use the back of the spoon. I actually like just using my hand. And you just press this down so that the butter and the graham crackers are all mixed together and firmed. And you're just going to form a pie crust shell. And this one was not really a fancy edge. I mean, you can kind of put your finger here to get it an edge there. Right now, I'm kind of working more on the edge. And, and you'll see as I'm working on the edge that there's some gaps there. But I'm not really worried because I can see that this pie shell over here has way too much in it. So I'm just going to bring some more over. Now, if you're just making a single pie and just doing the single recipe and not doubling it, then you'll have just the right amount and you won't have to worry about evening out the two pie things. Okay, so see, I kind of have made a shelf there with the crust. Now, I do want to make sure, and sometimes some people will use a spoon here to make sure they have that down in. But I'm just going to push it down in, make sure I don't see any pie tin or pie plate in there. Because if I see pie plate, then it's too thin. But as you can see, as I work with it, it slowly get filling in all of those places where you could see the pie tin. And you can kind of eyeball it and see like right here, I can see it's really thick, so I am pushing some out, and I'm going to bring some of that thickness right up here. And as I said, some people do like to bake it, and if you really feel like you really want to bake it, you can put it in the oven at 350 for about 10 minutes, and that'll help set it up. But I find, because this is a pie that's served cold, I find I just like sticking this in the fridge so that butter can firm up. Okay, so that one is ready. So as you can see, there is no pie plate showing on this and it's filled. So now I'm just going to stick this in the fridge and then I'm going to work on this one. And if I find I have too much pie crumbs, then I just take it out and I've got a little extra. When I get both of these done, I will be back with you and I will show you how to make the filling that goes inside. We're going to start making the lime filling. Now to do this, there's a little bit of prep work before we start making the filling. We first need to get, uh, for one pie, a half a cup of lime juice. Now I'm doing two pies, so I want to get a full cup of lime juice. And again, I really prefer to have fresh lime juice and not the bottled stuff. You can use the bottled stuff, but I myself prefer to have the fresh. So I'm going to use my citrus juicer, and I'm just going to juice my limes until I have what looks like about a cup.
And my juicer actually has a measurement mark on it. So when it says eight ounces, I will know that I have my cup of lime juice. Now it looks like with two limes, I have about four ounces. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut two more limes. I always buy more limes than I think I'm gonna need because sometimes you do get limes, that you just don't get that much juice out of it and you just don't know until you start doing it. So I always like to have more limes. And I use limes often enough in my cooking, but they don't usually go to waste. Looking at this, it's not quite there. So now I'm just gonna go one lime at a time until I get to eight ounces. Because eight ounces is one cup. My eight ounce mark is right there and I'm not quite there. So now I have my eight ounces. The key lime pie is uh, cooked over a double boiler. And so what I'm going to do is get all my ingredients over there and then I will show you how we make the key lime or the lime pie filling. One recipe calls for three egg yolks. Um, so since I'm doing a double recipe, I would need six egg yolks. So what I need to do is I need to separate the eggs. I have this egg separator that, as you can see, the yolk just fits in that little cup, and I'm able to get the whites up, and then I can just dump the yolk in there. So I need to get six of these. And so once I have all six of my yolks and the rest of my ingredients, I will meet you over at the stove, and I will show you what we do from there. I have the water in the bottom half of the double boiler and I've got the heat on high because I really want to get this actually to boiling before I put this on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump the sugar and the cornstarch into the top half of, of the double boiler. Now this is not on the heat yet. Now I want to mix it up well. And then I'm going to stick this off to the side. And then in this bowl, I'm going to dump the eggs. And I'm going to dump half of my water. And then I'm going to whisk it. to this egg mixture and just whisk it up and then I'm going to pour this egg mixture into the top half of our double boiler and then I want to stir this up I want to get that sugar and the cornstarch all mixed up and kind of dissolved into this liquid Cornstarch really needs to be dissolved while it's cold. If you put it on the heat, if you put the liquid on the heat and then add the cornstarch, you're going to get lumps. And we don't want lumps in a key lime pie. So I'm stirring this, getting all of the sugar and the cornstarch mixed in. Now I want to add my lime juice. Pour it all in. And at this point we're now ready to stick this on the heat. So I want to stir this and I want to cook this for about 30 to 40 minutes. And I want to stir it about every five minutes 
because I do not want the cornstarch to lump up. And I'm going to cook this basically until it is clear and thick. See, right now it looks very milky. Also right now you can see little lumps of the cornstarch. But for a few minutes I'm going to get out this little whisk and I'm going to try to whisk that cornstarch before this gets hot so that it will be liquidy. Because I don't want to see any lumps of cornstarch because once this starts getting hot and cooking, if those lumps are there it's going to be really hard to get rid of. So I will get back and show you what we do after this is has thickened and cleared. Remember, I'm going to stir it every five minutes and I'm going to cook it for 30 to 40 minutes. This is, as you can see, pretty thick and it is a little bit clearer. It, it's still opaque because it's going to be opaque. Now we're going to take the butter and we're going to add it one. The butter was cut into small sections, and we're just going to add it one at a time so that it can melt in there. And I've turned the heat off. But I've still got it on top of the water just because it's easier to stir this in while it's on top of the water. I'll take it off of the water when I'm ready to pour it into the pie tin. Now as soon as I get this butter melted in there, um, to make this look more like the lime pie, I'm going to add just a little bit of green food color. Now you don't have to add green food color, and you don't want to add a lot. If you want to have it just be the natural color, you, you can do that. And I'm, but I thought I would make sure that people could see that it was the lime color. So I did want to add just a little bit of the green so it can be more the lime color. And as I stir it in, I can decide if I think it needs a little bit more green or if it's just enough. And this is looking like it's a pale green. And that's really what we want is a pale green. So as you can see, this is mixed in pretty good. The butter's all melted. This is the nice green that I want. So all we have left to do is we're going to pour this into the pie shell. So we have the pie shells right here. And I just want to kind of make equal amounts in each pie shell. Remember, I doubled the recipe. So half should go in here and half should go in here. And now all we have left to do is we're just going to stick this in the fridge and let it chill or set up overnight and then it'll be ready to serve. Here is our key lime lemon pie. This is Nadine with DIY Sweets. Enjoy! Mm -hmm.